I'm here with another sensory exercise, uh, kind of building on this series that we're developing for you guys to become better tasters and to have more vocabulary and talk about higher coffee tastes. What we're talking about today is a blend component cupping. This is a really specific style of cupping that seeks to break down the individual components that make a blend and allows you to taste them on their own and then in their final sort of iteration here as the blend itself. The place where I've used blend component cuppings the most has been with retail training. So if you're serving or if you're roasting a blend that's going to be served in a cafe and barista staff are going to be preparing it either as espresso or drip coffee, you want them to be able to talk about it with a really high degree of confidence. Most baristas can say, this is a great blend, it's chocolatey, it's nutty, and it has a little lemon. But it's much more meaningful and rememberable for them if they can taste where the chocolate, where the sweetness, and where the lemon is coming from. And then they can communicate that to their customer when they're serving it. So for a training tool and from a retail perspective, it's really empowering for your staff, or for your baristas, so that they can feel like they can talk about the coffee with a lot more confidence because they've really experienced those flavors that are in the cup. If you've got a blend that is built of components that are also on your menu as a single origin, then it's really easy because you can just grab those coffees, you've already got them sort of set aside. It's a little bit more difficult if you're working with a blend that contains some pre-roast components. That takes a little bit more planning. Um, for a long time, I worked with a blend that was uh, Brazil and Honduras, that was a pre-roast blend, and then an Ethiopia added, uh, added into it as a post-roast addition. Now, to do a blend component cupping for those coffees, I had to work with my roaster about a week in advance to ask them to roast that Brazil on its own, because it didn't exist anywhere else in our lineup. So it was a little extra work and a favor that I had to ask my roasting staff. This cupping would also work really well as you're developing a relationship with a wholesale account, especially if you're trying to build a blend specific for them or let them customize a blend that they're gonna put their name on. Now this is really cool for people who do toll roasting or private labels, but even if you're just a roaster who wants to provide a really wide range of blends, you can bring your wholesale customers to the cupping table with you and lay out a lot of components and then ask them for their input. What are you liking? What do you think would taste good together? And then they have a lot more say and a lot more uh, investment in what their final blend ends up looking like. No longer are they just kind of saying, this is what's came, coming from our roastery and this is what they gave us. They're saying, we work to develop this blend with our roaster. So that relationship is stronger um, and they take on a lot of that kind of ownership and take a lot more pride in the process. Again, they understand it better, they talk to their customers about it um, at a much higher level and they probably sell more coffee as a result. And you don't actually have to do it as a full cupping with them. These cups could be brewed coffees and they could be single origin components here and a blend here, especially if there's a lot of people who need to taste the coffee or if people haven't really cupped before and the steps feel intimidating to them, I would just brew a convex of all these coffees and then pour them into cups and let people taste them that way. This is an actual blend component cupping that I'm doing here for Mill City to kind of look at a couple different components and how they would work together in a blend. We talk a lot about blending in our roasting classes. Uh, there's a lot of different ideas, and theories, and reasons for why people create blends, but I think the biggest one is uh, to create balance and to create a coffee that's accessible and familiar and enjoyable to a really broad audience. We all have favorites in terms of coffee origin or roast profile, and so we know that inherently we're not ever going to be able to maybe create one coffee, especially a single origin coffee, that is a crowd pleaser. But a blend can be just that. It can have elements of things that everyone else likes um, and sort of be much more approachable to a much broader audience. In that class, I gave a quick formula for like what a classic blend looks like. The formula was, you know, a nice solid base that has good body and foundational coffee flavors. In that case, on our table today, it's our new Guatemala. This is a single origin Guatemala that we're calling a blender Guatemala because it's at an affordable price point and it's gonna serve as that really nice chocolatey coffee flavor base. To that, you're always gonna to wanna to add something for sweetness and complexity. In this case today, we've got our washed El Salvador Pacamara. Now this is part of our processing trio. We have the same coffee as a natural or a, a, a fully natural coffee and a honey processed coffee. So you can taste one coffee has undergone three different processing methods. We chose the washed here because we wanted something that was gonna be mild, 
citrusy, and really complex and nuanced. So that's what the Pacamaro is bringing to the blend. For our last component, you want something that's really punchy and vibrant to really kind of give your blend some high notes and make it exciting. Uh, a natural is always going to be kind of a default, uh, but for today we chose uh, a natural Jurgachev that we have in our inventory that we're really, really excited about. Now I tasted all these coffees independently and I took some notes so I can describe these coffees better and I'll tell you what each of them is doing in the blend itself. Now the blend, when I weighed out these cups, I just did 30% of each. And this is a post-roast blend because I literally poured from these bags. For the El Salvador, I was tasting a lot of citrus, some herbal notes, some savory characteristics, but it was really nice. I think I wrote sweet tea, peach, it was dry and complex. Um, I love El Salvador's, especially Pacamaro, so this is a really special coffee and I love tasting it on its own. This Guatemala, I hadn't had before. Uh, it's new to our lineup and uh, I'm really excited about it. For a price point, uh, for what it is, I think it's a really, really tremendous coffee. I got a lot of chocolate notes, some dark fruit, uh, some red fruit. I wrote dry fruit. I was thinking about dried or dehydrated blueberries um, and kind of a raisiny characteristic. I think the body is nice and present, so it's a little bit bigger, bigger body than the El Salvador and it's sort of juicy, so it's, it's got a lot of character in terms of the mouthfeel. For the natural, this is a classic natural Yerba Chef. Uh, my note was fruit salad, kind of like a big bowl of fruit that's maybe been sitting out in the sun at a cookout or a barbecue. All of those flavors are sort of melding, melding together. I'm getting a lot of melon, a lot of strawberry, a lot of grape, and a lot of marion berry, which is a sort of region-specific dark berry that's kind of like a blackberry, kind of like a mulberry. Um, it's native to the Pacific Northwest and it's really delicious. That's what I taste here. When all of those components come together in a blend, a 30% of each, I'm just getting balance. I'm getting a little bit of the fruitiness, a lot of the body, and some of that complexity that these coffees offer. My note was garden flowers. It would just smell like a fresh garden at the height of summer where you're smelling fruits and vegetables and some floral elements. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's not unusual to not be able to pick out really, really specific flavor notes in a blend because everything is kind of working together to kind of counteract and balance and hold up these different flavors. And that's what's happening here. I would be really excited about this as a drip coffee blend uh, for a summer seasonal offering. Um, I might call it my garden blend or my garden party blend. Uh, and I do think that it would be uh, really enjoyable to a huge customer base. I think that the body that we're getting from the Guatemala would mean that it would stand up to cream and sugar really well. That's something that I always want to consider when I'm building a drip coffee. Um, but it's also great on its own, just enjoy black. Now the last point I want to make, if I hadn't built this blend yet, like if I was doing that kind of, you know, showcasing these coffees to a wholesale account, I might say, let's build a blend in the moment. What are we really liking? Or, I like this, this 30-30-30 blend, but I want to try it with a little bit more of the Guatemala. So maybe, uh, you know, 50% here and then 25% of each of these. That's really easy to do. I can just grab an empty cup, grab my cupping spoon, and start to build this blend in the moment. So what would that look like? Two scoops of the Guatemala, rinse my spoon, one scoop of the El Salvador, and one scoop of the Yerba Chef. Now I have that blend built immediately. Give it a swirl. Wow, it's really different than this one. I'm still getting a lot of that kind of sweet tea, but with a little bit of fruit maybe kind of squeezed into it, and it's really, really clean. The possibilities for this kind of combining coffees on the spot are really endless. The next step from here is, try to, is to try to build some uh, blends and cut those all out side to side to see what you like. And then looking at which coffees could potentially be pre-roast blends. That's going to save you time and build some efficiencies into your roasting calendar. This is all the exciting part of roasting coffee and building blends and getting your customers and your baristas excited about your offerings as well. Um, I hope that you'll set up a blend component cupping for yourself and your team at your roastery and let us know if you enjoyed this video and what kind of other tasting exercises you want to see. Thanks so much.